Welcome back to Come On Ref Academy. I'm Sarge. Thank you for stopping by and checking out this episode. Today, we're going to be discussing a part of the point of emphasis that has a lot to do with where we're going to be taking out the ball, dealing with the trapezoid, or better known as the rocket. It's the invisible lines that are on the floor that are going to give us an indication on where we are going to take out the ball with our new point of emphasis. Now, always, like normal, we're going to go through the rules, so bear with me. And at the end, we're going to go over specific clips that deal with how this is going to uniquely change how we take out the ball. So, hey, it's Thanksgiving. Grab your food, get a drink, sit down, and watch. Let's go. All right, let's look at our throw-in changes in the front court. Our designated spots are the 28-foot mark along the sideline and three feet outside the lane line on the inline. All right, rule 7-5-2 throw-ins. All right, when are we gonna use this? When the ball is in team control in the offensive team's front court and the defensive team commits a violation, a common foul, prior to the bonus or the ball becomes dead, the offensive team will resume play with a throw-in. Okay, the designated spot for the throw-in will be nearest to the 28 feet mark along each sideline, as we discussed, or the nearest spot three feet outside the lane line on the inline. When the defensive team has caused the ball to be out of bounds, as in Rule 7-1-2, ball is out of bounds. The throw-in shall be from the spot where the ball went out of bounds. That part, nothing's changed. All right, let's continue here. When the offensive team commits a foul or a violation in the backcourt, other than causing the ball to be out of bounds and the defensive team gains team control in the front court, the throw-in shall be determined by using the procedures in Rule 7-5-3, the four spots as we discussed in the first part of this episode. As we previously discussed, uh, this specific play is not going to change. So after an out-of-bounds violation in either the front court or the back court by either team, the throw-in shall be at the designated spot nearest where the ball went out of bounds. So as you can see in this play pick, uh, this clarifies exactly uh, what we have always done. And we're going to focus on uh, doing exactly the same thing uh, we did last year so it's really important that that doesn't change all right let's move on here after a violation or a common foul before the bonus is in effect by either team or any other stoppage in play the throw-in location will be determined by the location of the violation foul or the location of the ball when the stoppage occurs Backcourt throw-in, the designated spot nearest the foul, violation, or other stoppage. Front court throw-in, one of the newly established four designated spots, 28-foot mark along each sideline, or three feet outside the lane line along the inline. All right, let's look at the details here. Front court throw-ins. Officials shall determine the throw-in spot by using an imaginary line. This is called a trapezoid. If the stoppage of play occurs inside the trapezoid, the spot shall be the nearest point on the inline, three feet outside the lane line. If the stoppage of play occurs outside the trapezoid, the spot shall be nearest 28 foot mark along each sideline. So looking at this graph, we can get a good idea on how we're going to administrate. So on our inline, now this particular uh, line may not be on the court. So have an idea when you mark it off where you're gonna be. Most likely you're gonna see the 28s, okay? Some courts may not have it, but most do. The most important thing I will say in this situation uh, that we are going to make mistakes. But most importantly, I will tell you, the better we enforce it 
and make the adjustments early. Let's just do it. So the next officials come in, the kids start to get into the routine of where they're supposed to be. Most of the time, uh, they know where they're supposed to go. The coaches know where they're supposed to go. But here's one caveat that I want to say. When a timeout is being called, the coach often says, where am I taking out the ball? This may solve a lot of those problems. But let's start to get the kids in the right spot. Don't make up spots. You know, in the first you know couple games, if you have to mark it off specifically on the inline, let's do that. But the diagram is here. We have an understanding where we're supposed to be, and let's do it right. Like I said, we may make mistakes trying to get into the swing of things, but let's start it to establish uh, these specific guidelines. So that, as I said, the other officials come, this uh, the you know the kids and the coaches and everybody will know that's the right spot. Okay, now that we've went over the book portion, and I know it's boring, you probably just want some video clips, voiceover, and move on. But it's really important that we get this and set the tone. So before we move on, let's make sure that we get this front court absolutely 100% locked in. Okay, so if we have one, a foul, two, a violation, or three, stoppage, invert and whistle, or a timeout, we're going to look at this and see where we're supposed to take that ball out, specifically looking at our trapezoid. On the inside of that trapezoid, okay, we're going to look at the uh, lane line and then three feet off the lane line, make sure we, you know, get it right, make sure we're at the right spot, and then we're going to look at the 28, okay? Knowing those concepts, one, foul, two, violation, and three, stoppage, inadvertent whistle, or timeout. These are very essential to getting this right. So let's get to the clips. Let's put this in our uh, in our mind so that we can get it right. Let's go. All right, let's move into the first clip here. But before we do that, let's make sure that we have our trapezoid fully visible. Gonna be as accurate as possible. Okay. And... Uh, Let's indicate our 28. 28 is here. And uh, let's go. Okay, the foul is going to be right here. Okay. So let's follow it through here. All right, so what we want to do here, remember our 28 line, and we're going to be doing this a lot in this next couple of videos, is here. Now, our instruction is we are not going to be taking it out here, okay? Our instruction is we're going to take it out at the 28. Now, this is this is from last year or so, so... They're not into the, you know, new standard, but this gives you an idea of, you know, that foul occurs right here. And that's going to lead us to making sure that we're right in that, you know, 20, you know, 28 perspective, nice and easy, right down the line. Can't get it wrong. All right, let's move on. All right, let's move on to the next clip. We have a trail here in a competitive matchup. Great angle. So let's take this in two different perspectives. One, uh, foul, and then one, no foul. Here we go. It's in his area. Calls it. Okay, so let's go with the foul. All right. It's in his area. All right. So we are going to move up to the 28. That's the new uh, point of emphasis, okay? Now, let's think about this in the perspective of the ball just going out of bounds, okay? That changes up everything, okay? So we're not going to be doing just a ball out of bounds uh, going up to the 28. So the next clip here, 
as you can see, this is is exactly the way it should be. Okay, so two different perspectives, but let's make sure if there's a foul that is in that specific area that we're moving up to the 28. Uh, and then if the ball just goes out of bounds, pushed out of bounds, then we go back to our regular point emphasis that we've always done um, for taking out the ball. All right, let's move on. All right, let's double down uh, on this concept here. So again, foul and ball going out of bounds. Stops the clock. All right, so let's get right to it. So if the foul occurs, we are going to adjudicate this at the 28. Now, this is pretty close. Right here, the student athlete is pretty close to the 28. But let's let's get the player, when we start off, right at that 28, so that they know exactly what we're doing. Now, if we flip the switch here and the ball just went out of bounds, that ball is going to be taken out uh, according to our uh, mechanics uh, for uh, ball placement and taking out the ball. So again, doubling down on this on this important concept. All right, moving on. Now in this clip, we look at a perspective that really is going to be a part. Of... All right, in this clip, we have a really good example of the call being in the trapezoid. And we have two different parts where we're gonna get it right by the official at trail identifying where the ball goes. And then the second part, we have some adjustments. All right, so here we go. All right, the foul is called. And he addresses uh, where the ball is gonna be taken out. Okay, so now we move on to the second portion here where if we get the first portion right, let's make sure we get the second portion right, okay? All right, so we need to make sure that we are going to be three feet off this line. And so that would shift our official here to right about in this area. So if we we give that space and the direction to bring uh, the student athlete over, that's gonna allow us to get it right. So let's not, uh, let's not do this anymore, but in reality, uh, when we look back at this play, uh, we can say that this right here and this official saying taking it down here is perfect. But let's clean, we can clean this up with our new point of emphasis. All right, moving on. All right, we got two more clips. This is going to show us uh, where we want to stand and uh, hand that ball out on the inline. Here we go. Foul. Great sell. Look where he's at. All right, even though this is, you know, last year and maybe it wasn't on purpose, but this is a great distance to hand the ball out and also the mechanic of handing the ball to the player. So this gives you an idea, even if it wasn't on purpose, this is uh, exactly uh, the right distance uh, according to our new point of emphasis. All right. Next clip, and we'll finish it up. All right, the last clip. Now, I slowed this down so we can get a good idea how this play develops coming from the trail. It's going to move into the lead primary coverage. The play is going to result in a foul, but where the foul happens is going to give us an indication because it's outside the trapezoid where we're going to be taking the ball. Here we go. Ball goes down, and there's the foul. Push in the back. So, as we know, as we've talked about through this whole episode here, our trapezoid is going to be right here, okay? And we have to make a quick decision on where that ball is going to be taken out. And 
because it's in the lead, we need to what? Give the trail the point on where the ball is going. And that ball is going to be up at the 28. Okay? This is a perfect example of how it may happen in your game. So it's outside that trapezoid area. Okay? And don't make the mistake and go, you know, into the old style and end up on that corner. It's a foul outside the trapezoid area, end up at the 28. So this emphasizes it completely. All right. That ends all the clips. Let's go on. All right. That concludes today's episode. I want to finish with this. As the season goes, student athletes, coaches, and fans are going to see this adjustment. Early in the season, it's really important that we implement this. Start doing it so student athletes, fans, and coaches see it in the process of the game. So, again, thank you for stopping by. Make sure that if you know someone that could use this video, share it with them. This is how our community improves our IQ and we can become better partners. Thank you for stopping by. Have a good one and happy Thanksgiving.